Hi, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and I'm reading fan mail. No, I'm answering questions from fans. From Balan Bro 2 he gave $10, so thank you very much. And he says, thanks again, Matt. I'm quickly becoming a fan of your content. See, fan. And I appreciate that you keep things fairly technical for those of us who appreciate the science. I agree wholeheartedly that phase alignment between mains and subs is critical for seamless integration. Of course, that's a matter of fact. But I do have a follow-up question to this. I imagine that one can measure and time phase align for a specific seating location somewhat easily. But if you are trying to align from multiple locations to cover a wide seating area, what is the best approach? Intuitively, it feels like co-locating your mains and subs could help with more consistent alignment. But does this hold true in a real listening environment? Um, so this comes up a lot, and I actually had a whole discussion recently with somebody about this where he was saying, well, if you spend all that time getting like really precise phase alignment and time alignment, it won't be correct in another position in the room. And I said, it sure is. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You're right, and he's right, that it does actually vary. Obviously, because that's a geometry thing. But you're talking about really, really long wavelengths at these low frequencies. And so the relatively small positional changes that you have um, don't actually cause significant... So I've done that where like I'll, I'll get everything right and then I'll measure all the speakers and all the different positions and it, it shifts a little bit. There's always some bad seats, but it, it tends to only shift a little bit and everything remains pretty darn good. I probably need to do some measurements to show you guys that so you can see for yourself, but it really doesn't throw it off all that much. And part of that is because if you've got the subwoofers, at least like I do, I've got them in the corners in the front and in different positions in the back and they're all working cohesively the shift is relative, and so it doesn't actually cause the big misalignments. But the better answer to your question is you should always be aligning things to the RSP and not to a variety of seats. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is you're never going to be able to get it right everywhere. And if you try to do it for an average of multiple positions, and it is actually off quite a bit seat to seat, what you're doing is not making it right for many people or making it more right for many people. You're making it wrong for everyone. And you could argue that you've made it more equally wrong for everyone, but you've still made it wrong for everyone. So the better thing is to say, well, you are going to care about this way more than everybody else is. Um, when you look at my frequency response, seat to seat, there is not big peaks and dips as you move around the seats. The integration remains really, really good. So it's not like they're hearing something different here or they're hearing something different over here. They're hearing the same thing in these different seats, roughly. A little bit of variation, obviously. There's always going to be. But roughly speaking, they're hearing the same thing. And those differences in timing are fairly small. So you want to optimize for the RSP, that's the reference seating position, and not really worry about the rest. The rest will fall where it falls. The measurement of the rest is more of a confirmation step and to really document the extent of the, of the uh, variation that you do have seat to seat. But actually EQing does very little to nothing to improve seat to seat consistency. So if we forget the sound field management approach and the um, multi-sub optimizer approach, which uses per sub EQing to um, interact with the uh, um, modes of the room in such a way that you do actually get a bit of an improvement in seat to seat consistency. If we forget that one and we focus slow, slow, solely, there we go, not slowly, solely on the global EQing, global EQing has no effect on seat to seat consistency. The variance is the same. All you've done is made it better in a particular seat. And then the variance is the same across those seats. If you make it better at this seat and it makes it worse at the other seat, you didn't, uh, if you average those two, for instance, and you EQ it, EQ it differently, then what happens is that you still have the same variance seat to seat. You've just made it less good at the one seat, but not quite as bad at the other seat. As I said, the variance between the two remains the same. Let's just say there's a 6 dB difference at 30 hertz here versus here. And um, making it flat here makes it so that there's 6 dB too little base here, you could make it so there's 3 dB too little base here and 3 dB too little base here, but the extreme between the two, I think I said that wrong, you can make it so that there's 3 dB too much base here and 3 dB too little base here. There we go. But there'd be still 6 dB of variance between the two. There would be no way to make it so there's 3 dB too little here and 3 dB too little there, or whatever. There's always going to be the same variance. So you just have to kind of make a choice of what makes the most sense, and I think it makes the most sense to improve it here. The reason why you want to do multi-measurement, which I advocate for when you EQ, is that if you EQ for this one position, it's too small of an area, and there can be some extreme problems in this one area. So you want to get a better sense of what's going on over multiple areas. And it's possible that you've got a problem right here that doesn't exist here or here. 
The other thing, which is to me a bit of a different issue, and then I would look at things more broadly, is that you could have a scenario where there's a big peak right here, but everything's basically perfect here and, and even in these other seats. And it's like just this one seat, the RSP, that's the worst. And if you EQ for the RSP, you make all the other seats bad and they all become equally bad to make the one seat, the RSP, better. And that scenario, I still don't know that I would use an average to EQ it. I, I'm trying to figure out why this one seat is bad. Fix that and then EQ. But when it comes to time alignment and phase alignment, it's always done from the one position because any other position is going to be different. But if you get it right here, in most systems, my experience has been it remains close enough to correct in the other seats. Um, we get really fine grained in those improvements, which is why we use the one the one position. So, Balinbro2, thank you for being a fan of my channel. Thank you for the $10 donation. Thank you to everybody else who's watching and donating and all the other people who say they're fans. I'm going to Cedia soon. This will probably post after Cedia, but I'll just mention that... Uh, uh, when I went to CDA last year, I ran into some people that were fans, and it was kind of cool to have somebody come up and say, hey, I watch your channel. In fact, over the last few years, what's been the coolest is not just running into to, to the folks that are just your your enthusiasts and DIYers, for instance, saying I'm fans, because I just kind of assumed that was my fan base, but to run into people that are like the engineers at these companies and say, hey, I watch all your videos, big fan. It's like, really? You watch my videos? So... CD is always cool because it's a bit of a mix of both. There is some people who are from the media who watch my channel. There are people who are um, other YouTubers who watch my channel. There are people who are just from the public who just, who, you know, there are ways to get, it's supposed to be an industry event, but there are ways to get tickets. So, the, you know, non-industry people who get tickets and go, um, who share. But then there's people from the industry that like I kind of work with and then I find out they watch my channel. Gene Della Sala recently subscribed, I think, to my Instagram, and he watches my YouTube. Uh, Peter Aylat, who I consider a bit of a mentor and friend, and we learn from each other, um, is somebody who uh, apparently watches my channel. I, I got a new pink suit for Cedia, and he commented on a sharp-looking suit, mm -hmm. the kind of car I need to drive. And it's just cool to know that he's actually watching my videos. So anyway, thank you, everybody, for being a fan. Um, like and subscribe to these videos. I got more coming. Thank you.